Welcome to Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria, a proud republic with a long tradition of individual sporting achievement. This week hosting the latest round of an event which truly celebrates that ideal. Round two of the UIPN 2021 Pentathlon World Cup. Modern Pentathlon, a multi-skilled challenge with athletes put to the test over five disciplines in one day. A 200 meter swim kicks things off at the pool, that being followed by the round robin epe fencing, with extra points available from the bonus round. Next, the riding, where they all face the challenge of jumping an unfamiliar horse. And finally, the combined event, the laser run, where so often the entire event can be won or lost. A unique, exciting and tough test of all-round Olympic ability. With so many qualification points on offer in Sofia, as well as opportunities to sharpen preparations for the Olympics, a huge field of 199 athletes from 40 countries are here. Among the women, these are the ones to look for. From France, current world number one, Elodie Clouval may have had a disappointing start to the season in Budapest, but no one fights harder. She'll be chasing the form that brought her an Olympic silver in 2016. One of the favourites for Olympic gold this summer, London 2012 champion Lara Asadiskaita of Lithuania makes her first appearance of the season. Look out for a laser run performance that could turn the tables. And finally, Annika Schler of Germany, one of the best riders when it comes to the equestrian round. She's long overdue a place on the top step of the podium and she knows she's got the ability. Of course, it was hard when everything got cancelled. Um, I think in Germany we had really good conditions to train, so we could train all the time. Of course, we couldn't leave the country, we couldn't do training camps or anything, but I could re train really, really good. And then uh, in the beginning of March, I was tested positive on COVID, so just one month ago. The illness was not a problem for me. I was just three or four days like a flu, um, but the way back is still really hard. Like my heart rate is so much higher than before. I feel it in the lungs. So I came here and we had no idea if I'm able to swim 200 fast, if I'm able to run this four times 800. And my fencing coach just told me that he was really scared of my health in the semi-final. And so I was really satisfied with my 16th place, even if I know normally I would have done better. For me, this year is completely different than normal, um, but I try to think every competition and focus on the World Cup final and the World Championships um, when I will be fit again. Time now for the action from the women's finals as we head to the pool to join commentator James Zanadakis. Welcome then to the swimming heat for the second fastest of the women's swimming heat. You can see the final stages then of this penultimate swimming heat from the women. Joanna Muir from Great Britain, always quite quick in the pool, a silver medalist in Hungary earlier on this season and starting the day off very well indeed. She's going to get the fastest time of the day ahead of Axin of Turkey, who comes home in second place with Shimazu of Japan taking home the third fastest time in this second fastest heat. Over then to the fastest heat. That there was Golnaz Gubidlina, who takes some beating in the swimming pool. This then the final turn, this then the final stretch. And you can see Golnaz Gubidlina in the centre of your shot, so fast in the pool. A bronze medalist in Cairo in 2020 and starting her day in fantastic form. You can see in the centre of your shot in the red swimming cap, Golnaz Gubidlina of Russia absolutely flying as you expect us at this point of the competition. She's going to come home in the fastest time with Alessatero of Italy coming home in second. Elodie Clouvel of France taking home the third fastest time. A great start to the event. So this then confirmation of the scores after the first discipline of the day. You can see Gornaz Gubidlina nearly two seconds ahead of her nearest rival, Alessatero of Italy. Over then to the fencing ranking round. Ala Malachewska of Poland in great form. 23 victories, just 12 defeats ahead of Kate French from Great Britain, who has been fencing extremely well so far this season. These then the scores after the first two disciplines before we move on to the fencing bonus round. A chance for athletes once again to pick up those extra vital points. You can see Anna Malczewska of Poland already starting to build a bit of a lead. So we join the fencing bonus round with Gulias and Orteza on the fencing piece. Orteza starting to put together a bit of a run here with that touch. It looked like just on the hand. No, it was just uh, 
defended by Gugas, but uh, it was quick by Orteza to get off to a good start. Moving then on to Zhang of China. You can see Orteza with three extra points to her score. I wonder how important that could be as the day goes on. A fourth then as she defeats Zhang in that fencing bonus round bout. Over then to Kate French of Great Britain, of course, a gold medalist in Hungary in the previous World Cup. Orteza on a roll here. Six extra points. Can she get past Kate French? French of Great Britain. There comes a the touch, but it is Kate French who gets it this time to end that run. Maria Ortega, a fabulous run of six extra points to her score. How then will Kate French get on against Malacheska? This worth two extra points, which will of course be two extra seconds at the end of the day. French then advancing on Malacheska. Malacheska just getting towards the end of the piece. French gets down low. Malacheska defends that. Malacheska now turning into attack herself into the final 20 seconds and it is Kate French of Great Britain who picks up those extra points and that really could be important come the end of the day great stuff that there from Kate French and we take a look at the scores then after the first two disciplines are complete and you can see Maria Taser building up a seven second lead over Kate French Michelle Gullias in third over to the riding this then the opportunity for athletes a bit further down the running order to pick up some extra points. Everyone starts on 300. This is the only discipline where it's possible to lose all of your points. So really important to put together a good ride at this stage of the competition. We start then with Alice Sotero of Italy, who's currently doing very well indeed. A good score would be really important for her on horse seven, Jador. And you can see Sotero going round. No obstacles collected so far into the final stages of her run. And a perfect score for Alice. Sotero, 300. Great stuff. Who's next then? There's Iva Serapignati of Lithuania. She's riding on the back of a perfect score from Alice Sotero, which may add a bit of pressure herself. Heading towards those triple obstacles. 10A, B and C. Clears them as well. Just two obstacles remaining for a perfect score. This is looking great from Serapignati. And another perfect score. Two 300s in a row. Anna Malachevska, who we saw fencing so well, setting the pace early on in this competition, looking like another good run. Are we going to see yet another perfect score to really put the pressure on that lead bunch? Anna Malachevska of Poland in fine form in the fencing, clears the final fence and yet another perfect score. All eyes then on Marie Ortega of France, who has a bit more added pressure given that the athletes before her have put together good rides. Marie Ortega of France heading towards those triple obstacles, clears A, B and now C. Just two obstacles remaining then for Marie Ortega to guarantee a head start heading into the laser run, clears obstacle 12. That is incredible. Another perfect score, fantastic riding. You can see Marie Ortega there with a 13 point Point lead over Anna Malachewska of Poland. Alice Sotero in third place. Points then getting transferred to second. And you can see confirmation there. A 13 second head start to take over to the laser run. Here we go then, the climax of a long and exhilarating day. There's not a lot separating the top 10. In fact, just 30 seconds give or take between Jess Varley in 10th place and Maria Ortega, who is currently in first place. She starts with a 13 second head start. Anna Malachewska will follow Maria Ortega, but let's uh, keep our eye on Maria Ortega and see how she gets on with this first shoot. There you can see Malachewska from Poland leaving, closely followed by Sotero. So the pressure now for Marie Ortega. You can see that focus in her eyes as Malashevska arrives and she's away. Marie Ortega then consolidates that lead and you can see a big group of athletes arriving behind and this is the battle essentially for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and onwards. Away then is Malashevska chased closely by Alice Sotero of Italy. Kate French looks like she's made up a couple of places. Zhang there or thereabouts as well and you can see Kate French starting to to chase down Alice Sotero. This battle for second and third could be really interesting. In fact, Kate French is moving past Malachevska, moving past Sotero, and moves up into second place as we start then the second lap. How will Maria Ortega cope with this pressure, seeing Kate French starting to make her way down the start-finish straight? She was, of course, the gold medalist in 
Hungary just a couple of weeks ago and is in very good form in this World Cup season. Mario Tazer is away then, a time of 12 seconds. Kate French, though, is currently in second place. Alice Otero was there or thereabouts in those top three places. Malaszewska was battling for a medal as well. You can see Cluvel in your shot there, Joe Muir of Great Britain as well. But away gets Kate French and then away gets Malaszewska and away gets Otero. But Goliath's making her way through as well, Michelle Goliath of Hungary. So that battle for second, third and fourth really heating up as we approach the halfway stage of this race. Right, the third lap, the penultimate shoot or taser under a bit of pressure here from Kate French who is herself making her way to the shooting range and that gap has really closed down between Orteza and French a good shoot from Orteza here is important but she's gone to 14 seconds how quick is it going to be for Kate French sub 10 seconds so Kate French has really closed that gap now and the battle for gold and silver is getting interesting it's on the track now and Orteza is being chased down by Kate French Joe Muir of Great Britain breaking away lots of athletes now pushing forwards for a top 10 place vital Olympic ranking points up for grabs in this race but it is neck and neck between Maria Orteza and Kate French Kate French has absolutely closed that gap down are we about to see an overtake for first place? Kate French takes the lead, heading into the final laser shoot. So Maria Teza has led this whole race, but now sees herself behind Kate French. The final laser shoot. Who holds their nerve? Who gets towards gold? Kate French then is a little bit slower in the starting stages of this shoot. Maria Teza, remember, was 14 seconds in the previous shoot. She'll look to improve her time here. Kate French is going longer. An opportunity perhaps here for Maria Teza, who gets a Way. So it's now all on the track and up to Kate French to try and make up those places. You can see Malaszewska there of Poland who started the race in second place. She's going to try and close down the lead too, but I think it's probably a battle for bronze as far as she's concerned at this stage of the race. Laura Asadel Skate is absolutely flying through the field as well. This though, the battle for gold and silver. It seems to be Orteza who's going to have it in the bag at the moment. She's building that lead and really starting to add a little bit of pace. Maybe she's saved a little bit for the final stages of this race. Marie Orteza of France is going to take gold and she does fantastically dealing with the pressure. Kate French will take an impressive silver meaning it's gold and silver for her in the first two World Cups of the season. An exhausting race for both these little athletes. Malaszewska taking home bronze but my goodness me did Marie Orteza have to work for that. So just a look at the scores there. Maria Ortega with gold, Kate French with silver, Anna Malachewska with an impressive third place ahead of Joe Muir in fourth. Jess Varley in 11th place, Rebecca Langer in 19th. Looking a bit further down, you can see Janine Coleman in 24th, Cy Frazzel in 27th, and this rounding off the women's final results. Finished first, but that doesn't tell the whole story, does it? Uh, no, uh, I wasn't sure to finish first because I had Kate French just behind me, so I was really stressed, and, but I'm so, so bad about, about this day. Really, I can be more happy than, than now. Welcome back to Sofia in Bulgaria. This is the second stop of the UIPM 2021 Pentathlon World Cup. Time now for the men's individual finals. Up with the big names, Joseph Chong of Great Britain, one of the sport's strongest swimmers, made a stunning fastest time in the pool in Budapest. This time he needs to back it up with all-round excellence. Pavlo Timoshenko certainly not at his best during the opening round, so he'll be all the more determined. Look to the Ukrainian to put on a sprint finish that could surprise. But when it comes to the laser run, this man represents a huge threat. Wong Tai Jun of Korea. We've seen flashes of brilliance from him, but not his full potential. Maybe that's being saved for Tokyo. <laughs> Well, as Korean athletes, we are competing for just two places at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. We will support each other, whoever gets to go there. But if I'm going to win a place there, I really need to focus on what I have to do. I am very experienced in many competitions, but my ultimate goal is to stand on the biggest stage of all, the Olympic podium, and to win the first Korean medal in the history of modern pentathlon. 
So time for the men's finals at the pool as we hand over to commentator James Zanadakis. On then to the men's individual final. This then the swimming discipline starting on the fifth and final heat. And we've got some very quick swimmers in the pool at the moment. The final 50 metres of this Olympic-sized swimming pool. It's difficult to look past Jo Chung of Great Britain, who is absolutely flying right in the centre of your shot with the white swimming hat. Jo Chung, who's been in great form over the past couple of years, definitely a favourite for a medal at the Olympics. You can see just how far far ahead he is of everybody out there in the pool. Jo Chung of Great Britain will no doubt win this race. Looking at the time though in the bottom right hand side of your screen, is it going to be sub two minutes? Yes it is, a 159.2 by Jo Chung, absolutely flying. Wong Tung Chung of Korea in second with Benz Cardos of Hungary in third place. That then confirmation of the scores and you can see Jing Wai Jung in fifth place, Narth Lanigan O'Keefe in sixth. Watch those two as the competition goes by. Over then to the fencing hall and a really good fence from Ilya Palaskov of Belarus. 25 victories, just 10 defeats. Robert Kaza from Hungary with 24 victories and 11 defeats. That then putting those two top of the pile after that fencing ranking round and we'll see how they're going to get on at the fencing bonus round. Picking up those extra points as they get through the competition. Starting there with Tom Toulis versus Morosi. Tom Toulis with one victory to his name so far, but Morosi getting the touch there and ending that run there from Tom Toulis just a, a bit quicker on the draw there. So up next is Wung Tai Jung of Korea versus Morosi. Morosi with that one victory over Toulis, but it is Jun then that gets that victory and ends the run this time of Morosi. In the business end of the fencing ranking round, Kaza of Hungary will now look to pick up his first point as he enters the fencing bonus round stage. Wung Tong Chung advancing on his opponent. Quick defence that out from Kaza, who gets the touch, turning defence into attack. And we're into the final two. Ilya Palaskov of Belarus, who was so good in the fencing ranking round, versus Robert Kaza, who was just one touch behind him in fairness. Kaza then on the right-hand side of your screen. Palaskov on the left. Kaza with one point to his name so far. Palaskov launches himself forward, but Kaza is ready for him and picks up the extra point. It's, of course, two extra points in the final round. Great stuff that there by Robert Kaza. Kaza, he is going to be pleased with those few extra points and that then concludes the fencing discipline. These end the scores after the first two events. You can see Palaskov out in front, nine seconds ahead of Kaza, who himself is seven seconds ahead of Jun from Korea. Over then to the riding. Tom Toulis going very well here indeed. Did very well the last time this competition was held in Bulgaria and going well here in the riding, approaching the final stages of the course and a great score that from Tom Toulis, a perfect 300. Over then to Wung Tai Jun of Korea, who will look to consolidate and put together a good score. Approaching the triple obstacles, clears them without too much of a problem. Just one obstacle knocked over. That'll be seven points taken off his score. Approaching the final obstacle, clears that too. And a very confident 293 from the Korean. Into the final two here. Robert Kaza of Hungary, who didn't even qualify for the final in the previous event in Hungary, but going very well here indeed second overall heading into the riding knocks over the first vent from the triple obstacles looks back behind him to see but that's not going to be too much of a problem it's looking good this from Robert Kaza a score of 293 very good indeed our final athlete on the riding then, Ilya Palaskov of Belarus. Needs a decent score here to guarantee a lead heading into the laser run. He's been the one that everyone's chasing down in the competition so far. Doing well here on the riding. Clears the triple obstacles. A couple of obstacles remaining. Here comes the final one. This would be for a 2-9-3. And he does it. A 2-9-3 for Ilya Palaskov. Raises his wrist up in the air. Claps himself because he knows that was a good ride. And there you can see he's going to have a lead isn't he heading into the laser run ahead of Robert Kaza Tom Toulis in an impressive third place with Wung Tai Jung and Jingwa Jung in fourth and fifth there you can see Palaskov with nine seconds it's going to be tight again in the laser run Tom Toulis 15 seconds behind the leaders here we go then, the conclusion of a long day of sports here in the men's individual final. The scores are close. 
the pressure is there for all athletes as we get underway with Ilya Palaskov of Belarus, who's been in fantastic form so far today, starting things off with a nine-second head start. But many great athletes will be leaving the blocks behind him. So you can see here Palaskov just focusing to get that shoot underway and to get out the blocks as quickly as possible. Around 10 seconds, so good shooting that from Palaskov to consolidate his lead. Robert Kazza from Hungary, who didn't even qualify for the final in the previous event, is now looking pretty good for a medal in the opening stages of this race. Any of the athletes on your screen here will fancy themselves to get a medal, but it's all about keeping your cool in the early stages of this race. So you can see Adam Morosi also of Hungary at the shooting range. Tom Tullis ahead there then of Wung Tai Jun of Korea, who's won quite a few World Cup medals over the course of his career. Patrick Dog of Germany starting in seventh place, glancing over his shoulder. Joe Chung just a little bit further behind him, currently in the number one spot in the World Cup rankings. But a fellow compatriot Tom Tullis is doing better than him so far today in third place. So it is the second round of shooting, and Palaskov has been going well so far, consolidating that nine second lead that he started the race over Robert Kaza. Tom Tullis is next up in to the shooting range and you can see Kaza and Tullis just going toe to toe here in the shooting range Kaza is getting underway okay two out of the five so far Tullis gets away I think that's uh, Wung Tai Jun alongside him so an interesting battle for second and third and you can see there Manuel Padilla who was a gold medalist in Bulgaria last time this event was held in 2019 but this our race leader Ilya Palaskov out in front at the moment and looking comfortable looking confident looking cool looking like a man who is on his way to a gold medal this the penultimate shoot every round of shooting brings with it its own unique set of pressures makes one makes two focused closes an eye concentrates on that target four out of five over 10 seconds but that's not bad at all and you can see these three now are the ones that are vying for second third and fourth Kaza, Tullis and Jun all shooting at a similar pace this is absolutely fascinating this men's final and it is Jun that gets away fastest, followed by Tullis, followed by Kaza. But Palaskov has a decent lead. Just one round of laser shooting to go. But Wung Tai Jun is starting to pick up the pace a little bit there in second place, starting perhaps to even close down on Ilya Palaskov. We'll see as the lap starts to go. But Palaskov may be, may be just running out a little bit of steam. We'll see how things go after the final laser shoot. Wung Tai Jun is comfortably, well, I say comfortably in second place. He's still being chased down by Robert Kaza. Tom Tull is perhaps falling back a little bit. But it's Ilya Palaskov, our race leader, heading over the start finish straight for the last round of shooting. And you can see that gap has really been closed down, hasn't it? Ilya Palaskov has led the whole way through the day, but it all comes down to this, the final laser shoot. How close to 10 seconds is Palaskov going to get? He's over 10 seconds, but gets out eventually and looks a bit exhausted, doesn't he? Tullis is there or thereabouts, and it is Kaza that gets away, and Jung, but a little bit of a slow shoot for Tullis means he's quite possibly out of the medal battle so far but you can see Wung Tai Jun just starting to pick up the pace is he going to put pressure on Palaskov in the final stages of this race really closing down on the race leader Ilya Palaskov has led throughout the course of today you can see Lu of China who's making his way into things as well the final stage of this laser shoot this is the battle for first and second and Wung Tai Jun takes the race lead so it's now a battle between Jun and Palaskov who's falling away Robert Kaza has taken second place you have to feel for Palaskov who had gold in his reach but it is Wung Tai Jun of Korea who takes a dramatic gold medal with Robert Kaza coming home to take silver and Palaskov having to settle for bronze what an exciting end to the race just a quick look at the scores then. Wung Tai Jun in first place ahead of Kaza in second with Palaskov coming home in third in the end. Jing Wai Jung in 11th place. Charles Fernandez rounding off the top 20. A final look then. Uh, Jing Han Lee all the way down in 30th with Aslam Hamad in 25th. And this rounding off the scores. Well, today has been such an incredible day. And the conditions, of course, are really, really good. I'm very, very happy.
Mixed relay to conclude the first World Cup here in Bulgaria and the Russians starting the day off very quickly in the pool. Again, a time of sub two minutes. Always fantastic to see. Over then to the fencing hall. This is the final bout between Kazakhstan and Cuba. And it is indeed Kazakhstan picking up those extra vital couple of points to head into the ride. And they're going very well here, Kazakhstan. And here you can see them on the riding arena. It's been a difficult riding conditions this some of the athletes struggling a little bit out here but Kazakhstan they get a 283 over to the laser run they just have to keep their cool after starting with a 21 second head start there the handover between the girls and the boys and it is Kazakhstan who come home to take gold what an event Belarus with second and Korea with third Cuba just missing out taking fourth and so thanks for joining us here in Bulgaria, back-to-back -back events in Sofia. So join us very soon for all the highlights from Round 3. If you want to see extended coverage from Sofia, join us online at uipmtv.org.